When Raymond Dart described the Tong child, he had the right combination of features for the earliest hominid ancestor. In this case, an ape-like brain and a human-like face and dentition. He had a few other ideas wrong, but are worth exploring even though they are incorrect and we don't hold them today. One of the things that Dart did was, as he began to explore these South African fossil localities, along with other South African paleontologists such as Robert Broom, he discovered that these fossils that he was discovering were in the context of other fossils, other bones, broken shaft fragments, jaws, and also antler cores and horn cores. For Dart, these objects represented the culture of the Australopithecines. They represented Australopithecines' tools. Dart described the osteodontocarotic culture to explain Australopithecus africanus behavior. Osteo referring to the bone shaft fragments that he was discovering, carotic referring to the horn cores and tools that he thought that Australopithecines were using, and danto referring to the jaws that he was finding. For Dart, these represented different kinds of tools. Horn cores were digging instruments, those jaws represented sawing elements, and the bone shaft fragments represented weapons, clubs, and spearing items. For Dart, Australopithecus africanus was a killer ape. It was an ape that was a tremendous predator and scavenger that utilized these kinds of tool cultures to occupy new environments, environments that weren't occupied by existing primates. This idea came in many ways straight from Darwin's original idea for human bipedality, the idea that bipedality freed up the arms to carry tools. Now, as it turns out, Dart's osteodontocarotic culture was not so much a product of the Australopithecines as a product of taphonomy. Taphonomy, you'll recall, explains how objects go from being parts of living organisms to discoveries in the fossil record. It explains how organisms die, get buried, fossilize, and what happens to them in that process. And it turns out those broken shaft fragments, the jaws, the horn cores that Dart was finding and associating with Australopithecine behavior were really simply natural parts of site formation. They were the objects that preserved in the fossil record. The fact that they were broken, had these sharp and jagged edges that looked like they were tools, simply reflected the natural process of breakage that occurs during fossilization.